Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friendly Fire show. That's what I'm calling it. This is the first one, so <laughs> it's going to be very loosey-goosey. Uh, two co-hosts this time. we got Tyler here. What up? Ryan as well. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, Chris is off somewhere else. Tyler sent him a bag of dicks to go eat, so he's really busy. Just yeah, chowing eat, down. Actually, eating all of them. He's working currently, so he's not here, but... We'll make fun of Tyler plenty in his absence. Yeah, he's his, here in spirit. Right? He's here in spirit. Somebody should make get a bobblehead made of him, and then we'll just like hold it up. <laughs> we'll just get bobbleheads of all of us, and we're not here. We'll just hold them up, or, like those big uh, what the those fan signs for like sporting events. Like, oh, like, fat heads. Yeah, 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 fat heads. There you go. Yeah, yeah. just get one of those made. Uh so anyway, this is a show where we talk about shit, I guess. Pretty much. This is like a weekly show, right? We're going to do this weekly. I think that's the plan. Try to that's at least. Plan. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's yeah. our all media podcast. Yeah. So yeah. it's like when we used to do Last Call when we were in the Splunkers, except we probably won't be drunk for this. I guess I don't know until we actually root down a day where we're going to record because it's 1030 a.m. It's Sunday. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm not going to be drunk right now. I could be drunk. So it's, it's Wisconsin. Do you don't just wake up drunk like a little. <laughs> uh, we just we wake up, you know, grab some fucking cheese curds. And I just figured you guys just beer. wake up constipated all the time. Yeah. All the cheese. Constant... That's not a problem I ever have had. So. It's used to it. Your body's used to it. Yeah, it's, it's just tolerance. Evolution. <laughs> yeah. The evolution of Wisconsin is cheese and beer. Anyway, this is a catch-all. We're just going to talk about stuff that we do, listen to, apparently read, because some of us read. So. I don't read. I listen to audiobooks. It's not the See, same okay, thing. Okay, so... <laughs> but it is so the same story thing. on this one. Tyler said we could talk about books. Like, I don't have time to read. So apparently you don't need to read books. You just listen to books. because you're Yes. Like, yes. No, because you can't... I can't read while I'm at work. I can, I can listen read? to books. You've gotten far in life not being able to read, yeah. sir. I, you're right. I can't read. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. We're going to talk about video games first. So, Tyler, tell us about video games in general. You know, not one you're playing. Just read the Wikipedia article. History. Please. Yeah, pull it up. <laughs> Let me Google it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it starts off four score and seven years ago. Our four the long game. Uh, 87 years ago. <laughs> Oof. Let me just type this in and see a quick Google search. Video games. What pops up? Best Buy. That's the first thing. That yes, pops. Really? Perfect. Uh, you know, Best Buy does not have a lot of video games. They don't have a lot of anything. They actually have the one by me has a lot of computer stuff now, surprisingly. Yeah. I haven't been to a Best Buy in like, I couldn't even tell you. Years. A long time. A long yeah. time. Yeah. That's basically all that exists. I guess you go to Walmart, Target, and you can buy a fucking laptop at Target. I want trust one from Walmart, but I mean. So you want to know what I'm playing? Besides with yourself, yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm playing a plethora of things. Uh obviously One Piece Odyssey for the game exploration. You finally got to that second stopping point for that. Uh, then the other two main things is uh, Persona 3 uh, Portable, that remaster that they put out on Game Pass. I've been playing that. I'm like six and a half hours into it. It's pretty good. It's a lot different than 5, obviously, because it's so long ago that it was made. It, like, the, the time frame that you're like in the city, it says like 2009. <laughs> this is the year. So, ah, the future. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I remember um, playing the first Persona on PlayStation 1, and that was yeah. like, you know, isometric 3D tactical grid kind of deal. It was pretty fun. Well, that's like, with this, like, you still do, like, the school stuff, and but it seems like it's much more compact, which I actually kind of like, because with the Persona 5, it's so broad and expansive that it, like, was overwhelming to an extent, because it's like, well, how am I going to spend my time? Where it's like, in this you have fewer options, so it's much easier for me to just pick something and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do this time. Whereas in 5, it's like, okay, the city is fucking huge, and then you have all these other things that you can do. It's like, I, I fucking lost. I don't know. You know, what is the right choice here? 
And that was what I was. Yeah, exactly. That's what always kind of threw me off in that game. Is I, I felt like I could never make headroom my character and what I wanted to do. I felt like I was always kind of like falling behind on something that I could be doing. Where just this like real much, life, man. Yeah, and where this is much more streamlined, and uh, it's, I don't feel like I'm falling behind on everything. The dungeon exploration is a lot different. It's not like in five where um, you're going into these castles or whatever like inside of these people's minds to like break in and steal something it's like it is like a grid based dungeon where you're going floor to floor to floor um and you find like the enemies on the ground and you can attack them just like in persona 5 and stuff and initiate the combat the combat is very similar which is actually surprising how little that has changed from three to four to five um but overall i'm really enjoying it i think it's super fun it's uh, I guess it's had some issues or something online. I've seen people bitching about like the sound design and stuff. I don't notice it because I'm not one of those people that gives that much of a fuck. Um, but I guess from like Persona 3, the one that originally came out on PS3 versus Persona Portable, which was the port to PlayStation Portable or Vita, it's either the PSP or the Vita. I don't remember. Definitely one. one of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess there was a sound change, like within the quality, and I guess it sounded better on the PSP, and I guess it sounds worse on the Xbox. I don't know. I, I don't give a shit. I don't notice it. It sounds great. <laughs> Music, music's good. Combat and dungeon crawling is good. Like all the story stuff is really interesting and unique. So I'm having a good time with it. Well, I uh, I've actually been thinking about starting that on XCloud, like a little bit of gaming. Uh, oh yeah. Portably, that's the, like you want to do something turn based like that because you don't have to want to have to worry about timed inputs. It's one of those things where I'm playing it on Xbox because it's on Game Pass and I pay for Game Pass, so it's like I might as well. But it'd be it would be perfect on Switch. I mean, it's on Switch and it's only twenty bucks, but man, it'd be such a perfect Switch game. Hey, X Cloud, uh, I'm serious. X Cloud works pretty good. I know, but look, look how tiny the screen is. It's I know. So tiny. Yeah, you're, you're right. Get a bigger wrong. one. <laughs> mine's, mine's bigger. bigger That's too. And then it's not going to fit in my pocket. I mean, I guess I could do it on an iPad. But <laughs> this I fits in my pocket. How small? Tyler wears skinny like, jeans. We're yeah, millennials. Yeah, I wear it's... skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wear skinny jeans. So. But then just I'm put a... it in your jacket pocket. I mean, I put my phone in my back pocket anyway, so it would probably fit, but. I just don't want to, okay? Jeez. <laughs> God, you caught me. It's, right. you know, it's an option for those. Like I said, that's something I'm yeah, thinking about is. doing because that feels like the kind of game that would be ripe for that xCloud thing where if I wind up hitting a little bit of lag, it doesn't really matter because it's turn-based anyway. So. Yep. Yeah, man. Uh, those games are hard as fuck, too, because I don't know how much you guys have played of that series, but you're in some of those combats and you you get, like, weakened and like the enemy gets an extra turn and you get fucked up real bad real quick it's it's pretty crazy but it's fun you can i've put a good a good few hours into persona 5 nowhere close to beating it but good like 30 or 40 hours that's i love that 30 or 40 hours you know, you're beating it. <laughs> nowhere I close mean, that, yeah that's that's definitely a few for persona 5 <laughs> See, but that's why i like this one because and i'm, I'm hoping that four is like that perfect in between of both of them where it's like a little bit better quality of like dungeon crawling and stuff, mm. but still like that minuscule like um, options for what you can do within the city. Uh, because like I'm six and a half, almost seven hours, I think, into this, and I'm already like a month and a half into the year. And so it's just like flying by. It's, yeah, but it's super good. fun. Yeah. And then other than that, uh, I started that Hi Fi Rush game that came out. This week, just shadow dropped or whatever from uh, an Xbox Direct or whatever that they had on the 26th? Whenever it was. Yeah, I've got it downloaded. Yeah. I haven't started it yet. Yeah, made by Tango Gameworks, which it's like, I'm wondering how they split the development of, uh, what was that paranormal game that came out like last year? Uh, year Ghostwire? Before? Ghostwire Tokyo. Didn't they make that? Yeah, yeah, that's them. Yeah, so I'm like, how did they split the development of Ghostwire Tokyo and this, like, at the same time? Because this game is super high quality. It's 
incredible. Like the art design, sound design, uh, just everything about it. It's super fucking good and unique. And the combat system is crazy how it's like you, it's um, like a hack and slash kind of a game, but everything is on the beat. So like you get bonuses if you attack in rhythm and there's like constant pulses and stuff within the environment or on the UI to indicate what the beat is. And it's just really an interesting concept. And uh, I definitely want to play more of it. It's, it's fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Music's good. It's got a lot of good music in it. Okay. You got to remember it for the end of the year. Probably. I mean, I remembered uh, uh, the world ends with you. Not the world ends with you. Nobody uh, saves the world. Nobody saves the world. Yeah, sorry. He forgot it next year, but he did remember it for the end of yeah. the same Yeah, world. I remembered it for when it mattered. <laughs> yeah. But it's 2023, baby. I've moved on. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Well, what are you playing this week? Uh, I've been playing some Gunfire Reborn with uh, some of the Draft Punks crew, and uh, Chris has been in with it, in with us as well. Have you guys heard about this one? Yeah, I had it downloaded at one point, but I never played it. It's on Game Pass. It's a four-player co-op, first-person shooter, roguelite. Uh, the aesthetic is kind of... Uh, uh, what's the game? Deep Rock Galactic. It's kind of that, like, detailed but not, like, high polygon count kind of aesthetic. Uh, the weapons, like, not in true number scale, uh, but, like, in variety. kind of feels like Borderlands. Like, they've got everything from... A regular pistol to I'm just gonna hold this lizard and it's gonna become a flamethrower as <laughs> as Ollie <laughs> invades Tyler's camera down there. Um <laughs> Oh now he's just gone. <laughs> He'll be back, folks. Um It's it's a lot of fun. There's there's a lot of great explosive weapons, there's different uh starting characters that give different builds as you go. So like the first character you have is a little ninja cat, and they have this ability that can like lock enemies into place. And they've got a smoke grenade, and they deal, like, a lot of their upgrades deal with elemental stuff. So, building into elemental, deal more elemental damage. Your uh, hold enemy in place does an explosion of the same element that the weapon you're holding does more damage. So, it's all about just, like, finding these builds. And the builds get more complex as you go, because you're slowly unlocking more and more things that can drop. And you're making yourself better as you go. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fun time. Uh, there There's... At least on PC, I know Travis has had a, a a few times where he's had to, like, delete and reinstall the game because it just wants to start running at, like, 20 frames per second and restarting the game doesn't fix it, rebooting the PC doesn't fix it, but uninstalling it and reinstalling it fixes it. So, not sure exactly what that problem is. I don't know offhand if anyone's playing on console, but if you do download it on console, it's cross-play between the Game Pass version. So. Yeah, that's an interesting thing to happen for pc yeah it's a really weird one but uh but i mean he he's willing to do it because the game's small i think it's like five gigs four and a half gigs uh and yeah. it's a fun time it's uh it's a really enjoyable time if you've got a, a good group of guys there's always fun builds to be had and you like all the all the loot drops for you but you can share it right so if your friend is building a, has a specific build needs crit chance for whatever and you're not building for crit and you get a scroll that increases crit chance, you can share it to him, so his build can be more optimized. He can share those whatever scrolls he's not using to you. Uh, it's it's a really fun time. There's a lot of build variety. I've I've been dragged into uh, play with some friends who have like basically beaten the game. Uh, and like the weapons that drop for them, the scrolls that drop for them. First playthrough, uh, by the end of it, I had like you start with like three grenades you can throw. By the end of it, I had 32 grenades I could throw. Uh, my magazine on a gun that started with eight bullets was like 70 bullets that missed my targets didn't consume ammo and every kill refreshed my ammo so i could walk into a room and hold down the shoot button and never let go the whole room sometimes because i'm just killing just fast enough to always be putting ma uh, ammo back in my magazine and then when i miss it doesn't matter sounds very good it's a fun time it's a really fun time i uh, i would recommend it would be a good wasted game it would be a good wasted game for you two. We'll have to check it out. Yeah. We do have our next wasted game kind of picked <laughs> out already, but maybe I, one uh, after that. I Well, you know what? It's That gunfire might be a good one just to have in the background because it's a roguelite, the story. There's no real story here. There's cause when Is I, there I, like a definitive ending to it? Uh, there is a final boss, um, and I don't know if there's like a cutscene after that or something or when credits roll exactly. But, like, you can finish a run 
and then yeah. you know start start a next run there's a couple different bosses for the end of each world so there's always you, you know it's always which boss are we going to fight there's always a little bit of variety there um it's just a good time that sounds like a great time um other than that i've been dabbling other than one piece of course um dabbling in uh some dmz been getting down lately uh which i got you two into at least a little bit <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I played uh, for like a week, and then I started playing a bunch of other shit, so I just haven't gone back to it. There's a lot of games. I play, right I play more, it's just there's so many games out right now. There's a lot of games. Um, and uh, I, started, I started a new mobile game called Kitten's Game. So it's a, it's a little idle game where you're slowly building a kitten village in time. I'm trading with kobolds now. Interesting. <laughs> do, they, do they eat them? Uh, no, no, no. We like we trade uh, catnip for wood. It sounds like a drug deal. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the kobolds are doing with the catnip, but it is a drug deal. You're trading <laughs> drugs for wood. <laughs> it's the American dream. It's very lucrative. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I've been up to, games wise. Um, yeah, games wise. Uh... I've just been playing One Piece and Destiny 2. Um, been running the Spire of Watcher. Got my cowboy hat finally. It only took two, three weeks of doing it. But yeah. Ready for Much that? Much to talk about. Lightfall. Yeah. Lightfall will be fun it's, uh, next month. I'm excited for that. Is... Uh, I know there's a lot of games that came out, but I don't. Is it crossplay yet? Yes. Yeah, my brother plays on PC and we play with okay. him. Okay. Because I did re-download yeah. it on PC because Lightfall be looking good. I kind of want to jump back in a little bit. And I've seen you playing, but I haven't been sure if it was crossplay yet to be like, yes, you got room. It is uh, crossplay between all of the consoles. Well, minus Switch because it's not on Switch. I think it's get, on Switch. Get fucked, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I don't think It'd be awful Switch. to play on a Switch. I would look like absolute ass. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to. There's no way I would run. Yeah, so, I mean, my dad and I are usually on most every night playing, which is good to get back into the rhythm of that because prior to us doing Spelunkers, that's pretty much what my life was, is playing. And even after doing it, I don't think I had played Destiny for a long time. And I missed it, so I'm glad yeah. to be playing it again. I'll have to join you one of these nights. I think I got an update to yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's one of those things I played the first one a shit ton and I played two when it first came out a lot and then it just moved on to other things it's hard for me to play live service games because it's just there's so much shit that comes out and I just want to play everything yep. but the game is good you know the Lightfall stuff looks really interesting it does yeah the trailers I've seen for Lightfall like I said I re-downloaded it I've <laughs> I, yeah. I want to get it takes back place into. on Neptune very very 80s aesthetic new subclass it'll be fun I'm excited for it to come out that's um, sometime in february end february, of february yep. yeah end of february so like a month away probably rough mm -hmm. yeah should be good iron banners next week so which is good because i just got the mida multi-tool scout um oh uh, nice catalyst so i have to get 200 precision headshots and get the catalyst <laughs> Yeah, you think that's bad? I just did one for you had to do it with grenade launchers, and that it is fucking awful for yeah. Mother Horde. Yeah, Oof. It's not. It's not fun because you know have select ammo. You only start off with two. Yeah, I never really did much in the Crucible period. I definitely am there for the PVE stuff. Yeah, I know a lot yeah, of I like that's Gambit. what I like to play. Yeah. Was a big. Uh, was it, they call it Slayer? What did they call it? The Clash. Clash, yeah. But, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, so Iron Banner is the, like, once a month big uh, PvP. I mean, they get, uh, you know, you get a lot of better looking uh, armor and unique weapons just for that event. But yeah, that's what I've been playing. Cool. So, nothing. Oh, I did play the Kid Leroy event in Fortnite yesterday. Which I done is one of the better looking, and it wasn't very buggy, 
So it was it was a pretty good, good time. You get a bunch of XP. You know, easy yeah, to... I still need to do it. Ollie was wanting to check it out, so I might check it out with him. Uh, the kids yeah. have done it like nine to ten times. I want to say, Jeez. like I just constantly hear the kid Leroy coming from the living room. Flash is running around, dancing, singing "Stay." I was like, <laughs> like okay, whatever. But yeah, that's all I've had time for game wise. That's why I don't. I like the live service ones. I like better because I don't have time for games, so I don't need to start all these new games. So just concentrate on one game. It works out better for me. Who reach zero? Play those. That's fair. Your favorite. I always have to play a new game every fucking two days, otherwise his dick will fall off. That's actually true. I went to the doctor, yeah. and that's what they told me. They <laughs> like prescribed curse. that to me. They said, play a new game every day, or else your dick will fall off. And I said, <laughs> no problem, doc. <laughs> Write up that prescription. Let me go get that filled. <laughs> Beat it and delete it. Uh, I, I did have another game I totally forgot about. I played okay. that 007. Uh, oh, some Goldeneye? Goldeneye. Yeah, I played it on Switch, and it just plays like absolute dog shit. The control yeah. scheme <laughs> that they put on there is just fucking horrendous. Like, it was bad on 64 with the controller but you could get used to it like you can't even get used to this shit See, it's just, that's it's one of those things where i'd trash. rather just live with the nostalgia and the fun i had with it rather than you know what i'm gonna download it and fucking hate myself i mean i was still having fun and you watch like scooby-doo and then you watch it when you're older and it's like scooby-doo is fucking stupid as fuck <laughs> scooby-doo still how did i ever watch about? it oh i, uh, I like can still scooby-doo. watch scooby-doo it's great no, i can crazy. watch scooby-doo I could watch like Merry Melodies and like the old like Bugs Bunny and like random cartoons. That, well, yeah, like, I could watch those too, but to, I mean, they're all the five same, minute you know? ones that don't have like specific characters in. You know what the best uh, one of those? Just going on a tangent here. Uh, best one of those Hanna Barbera cartoons was from back in the day was Wacky Races. Oh yeah, when like, it was nobody Detroit ever teams. fucking yes, and nobody ever talks yeah. about that cartoon. It was oh, so fucking good. So yeah, the funny thing is, is we'd always pick the teams and we'd give my little brother the fucking you know with Schneidly and his little dog. Yeah, the one that never wins. It's like, and then my brother would always have the one with like fucking the, my older brother with like Yogi Bear, the one that always wins. And then I'd be like, <laughs> it's literally like, it's always this team wins, and this team is second place, and the other team is last. Like, yeah, what's fight. the uh, the girl in the pink Penelope something? I can't remember her name. I don't know, but she she wins all the time. And fucking Captain Caveman in there. Yep. And then the those weird brothers that were like mob bosses. <laughs> Old cartoons fucking rule. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that segues nicely into our... I guess we'll just, this can just be like movie, TV, entertainment, right? Yeah. yeah. What you Anime, watching? You know, what you watching? That's what we should call that's, it. That's, that's what the, you watching? What you watching? You're, watching? you're watching magic or listening to magic happen right now. All right, I'm going to get so, a movie out of the way because y'all know me. I barely see movies. So the fact that I have a movie to talk about is like... A, like a, Are we going an back? Achievement. Like a... A bunch of weeks, though. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you already know the music. Gonna <laughs> drop glass onion right on top. Yeah, of I am everything. gonna drop glass onion on top of everything because I'm not gonna talk about a movie for six months now. <laughs> so, that's true. So okay. let me get my movie. No, out that's of the not way. true because like, if you're gonna talk about this, you definitely should watch the menu. Menu. That's on HBO yes. Max. Yeah, it's uh, Ray Fiennes. Um, it's very good. Yeah, like Nick, Nicholas Holt. I don't have uh, HBO. That one girl that's in everything now. I mean, can't you can right. get it on Vudu, like just pay for it. It's well worth like the fifteen dollars. Or actually, I think it might be on sale right now on Vudu because I fucking buy shit on Vudu. Listen, all the time. I just I, re- I just re signed up for Crunchyroll. If I'm watching anything, I'm watching anime. But <laughs> well, then <laughs> good... watch Trigun Stampede. Anyway, talk about your movie. Um, Glass Onion, very good time. I uh, I was a big fan of Knives Out. Uh, I, I love murder mystery movies. Clues an all time favorite of mine. Um, so th- those are just great movies. Knives Out's a great one. And Glass, I think personally, I'm a fan of Knives Out over Glass Onion, but Glass Onion's still very good. Uh, great way to, to have and t- to like show us a twist and then have five more twists ready, uh, you know, every time. It was a very, a very fun movie. And you guys both watched it, right? Yes. Correct. It's a great yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, just yeah, I would to... say the difference like between Knives Out and the Glass Onion is. I liked how Knives Out was more of like uh, kind of an older. It, it was more like Clue. Mm-hmm. It's more classic like aesthetic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I liked that over the Dave 
Batista fucking wearing a thong with a gun in it. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, but like Dude, he's so good in that movie. He's I know, so no, it, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. Like literally, the differences between these movies is like a nine point eight and a nine point seven. Like it's not like oh this yeah, one's yeah. fucking ten and this one's fucking six. Like right, these these are very close. Like they are both very good. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you can't we you can't really discuss any of it without like going into bad parts that people haven't seen it. Like it's just a yeah. really good movie that. You know, if you enjoy, you know, crime, mystery, yeah, or, if you, you know, mm -hmm. just good movies. Just good writing. Just good writing. Yeah. Excellent fucking dialogue. Good yep. character twists. Um, it's, uh, yeah, the movie's fucking great. Yeah, you know, the menu came out the same week. Like, these were literally like four days apart, I think. So that one weekend, I watched Glass Onion, and then I watched The Menu. I'm like, man, this is a great time for fucking movies. Because <laughs> the menu is very, very good as well. Uh, synopsis, basically, they get invited to an island where Ray Fiennes is a chef. And he invites, like, you have to be very rich to come to this island. I've basically. seen clips. I've seen some clips and, of this. Uh, yes, it's very good. Like, I'm not going to, like, that's just, that's how it starts. And uh, what's his name that plays the Beast in the awful X-Men movies? Nicholas Holt. Yeah, that guy who basically brings this girl along and you know she ended up being the protagonist but it's very good like there's very very well written moments that you don't expect in this movie but yeah it's it's a lot of fun i enjoyed it and it is on hbo max um you get any other movies before we do? we're just gonna go in like this weird non-formatted transitions uh, of yeah awful so I got more movies yeah. that I've seen. I mean, I fucking watch like two movies a night, but I'm not going to talk about all those. <laughs> I don't think I don't know you watched... personally, Ryan, had any. No, no that's, that's it. Okay. That's that was your movie for the only, three months. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's the that's the one you got out of me this quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Hold I mean, on, let me... it looks like it's going to be good. I'm excited for that one. I watched Violent Night over Christmas. That's the one with um, uh, what's his name playing Santa Claus, and then he just beats the living shit out of everybody. And John Leguizamo was almost like the mob boss. It's yeah, the guy movie. who plays um Hopper. Hellboy and yeah, yeah. Hopper and Oh my god, what's things. his name? David Harper. Jeez. Yeah, I knew it was something with an H. Yeah. But I don't need to be messing his name up on internet land. I got you. I know I got these actors <laughs> and actresses. Somebody Google it quick, man. We don't want <laughs> Yeah. That girl from the menu, by the way, was Anya Taylor Joy. That it came Yeah, she's in uh there. what's it, uh, the Queen's Gambit. Yeah, she's also Netflix. in Netflix. Um, Peaky Blinders, which is like one of the best shows ever written. And uh, she's going to be Peach in the Mario movie. So. Yeah. Have I haven't watched any, any movies. No movies? I've, no. All right, let's move to. I've just been watching TV shows. All right, what do you got for TV shows, Tyler? You want to include anime in that? Or just yeah, yeah, we're just going to. It's a TV show. Okay. Uh, so it's not here. Anime wise, I've been watching One Piece Stamp, or not. <laughs> One Piece Stampede. One that piece is a movie. Stampede. That is a movie. That's an actual movie. <laughs> I've been watching Trigun Stampede. Um, I haven't caught up on episode three or four yet, but that I haven't watched is, four. That anime is real good. Um, just the animation. I, at first, I didn't think it was going to be for me, but it definitely grows on you. And that CGI oh, is fucking yes. incredible. Yeah, his uh, arm is really the only thing that kind of puts me yeah, off. But I've gotten used to it. That first episode, it's just kind of like, and also like really his. Fit in his like weird pretty boy haircut where it's like he used to just have it like well i mean they had to modernize it i mean that i know but come on man come on i don't mind it it's okay it's all right but uh yeah that anime is super good and how they're reinventing vash the stampede and that world and taking liberties with certain characters and certain characters not are not in it yet that yeah. you know we know and love from the original like millie it's true at the very beginning, she's not in it at all yet. I, I'm wondering if she even shows up. Um, but it's it's really good and interesting. I like it a lot. Well, I mean, they really just switched around the uh, the first couple of people there. I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah, I want to watch it, but yeah, like they're not in the, in the same kind of roles. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was trying not to get specific with it. <laughs> and just and just the things that they allude to at the end of like the stuff that's. At the end of the original, 
like they're already alluding to it the very first episode. Yes. <laughs> this uh, one, it's just very, like, like the structure of it. It's just like they talk about stuff that you didn't know about till the end of the other one. It's like, oh, this like is the last cool. two episodes, because they really yeah. just they drop that shit on you real quick in the original. Should I watch the original before I watch Stampede? Is that no? I mean, no. it's gonna it's gonna retell the story. It's just the way the in format way. It goes to it. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, you right. can. It is very good. It's like one of my favorite enemies. They are not anything alike, though. There there are things about it that are very similar in like his mannerisms and like um. Not Millie. What's the other girl? Meryl. Meryl. That's um, a Pokemon. You can't fool me. That's a Pokemon. Yeah, like the way that they've written Meryl is different and stuff. Um but it's it's good. It's interesting. All right. It's on the watch list. It's good. On Crunchyroll, man. Yeah, it is. I just put it on my Crunchyroll watch list, huh? I promise. And then I I watched uh the entire first season of Mob Psycho one hundred, and that anime is fucking top tier. So good. I was not expecting it to be what it like the way the first season ends and stuff. I was not expecting it to be that. Uh, it ended up being more of like a family drama in a way, with like some of the things that they get into. And it was the animation at first, you're like, man, this is kind of off-putting and weird. And then when it gets into the fight scenes, you're like, holy shit, this is some of the best animation I've seen in a long-ass time. It's just absolutely incredible. It's so different and unique from anything else that's really out there right now. Um, so could not recommend that enough. It's so good. I really want to watch season two and three. And it's short. Like, the first season's only 12 episodes. Want to get that? Mob Psycho 100. Ah, yeah. And then, let's see. Let me pull up Crunchyroll real quick. I've been watching a lot of anime. <laughs> I started One Piece again. So good. Uh, it is good. I'm only, like... So the first time I watched it, I got to, like, episode 60-something. I'm not entirely sure, and it's been years, so I just restarted again. I'm only on, like, episode 6 or so. Um, but like, especially playing Odyssey at the same time, coming back to the show, like the characters really are who they are. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of evolution to come, but like they have some Luffy being a glutton, like that's just Luffy. That's, you know, that's not going away and it's, it's just fun. It's a fun one to watch. It's just a good shonen. you know, you're not going to get like, uh, uh, maybe the best, most super deep writing of all time every episode. <laughs> No, it, and what it, that series does so well, I talked about it in the One Piece Odyssey episode that we did, is it has the length to tell these, like, incredible stories. And, like, mm. yeah, at first these characters are just written off, like, Loopy is this happy-go-lucky glutton, just does whatever he wants. Zoro is, like, you know, the headstrong, like, muscle of the group. Right. Uh, but he's also an idiot. At the same time, yeah, uh, and just like how they created all this nuance with these characters and these backstories and this just rich world with detail is like it has grown. That is what's so interesting because like you can't really point to anything else that's out there that has done anything like that that has been going for that long. I believe it came out in '98, so it's been going on for like 25 years. Yeah, it's and uh, just to have 25 years of storytelling there is incredible in the way that they are able to stretch this out and like it's like stretching out the taffy you know and like the yeah. more they stretch it out the more it becomes consumable and it's it's just so fucking good it's really good it's the best as my dog would tell you as they bark the <laughs> they're like you talking about one piece up there <laughs> but yeah episode six it's uh that's early it's early, early yeah like i said very early yeah Tom, you were watching that. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a few weeks. Uh, I think I'm around. Yeah, you stopped. Two forty. Just as like it was about to like get into some like super good shit. <laughs> it's like it's just incredible. It's a stuff. fucking big commitment, man. I can't just watch yeah. it every night. Mm -hmm. Like and, I like it, but I don't like it that much. And you know, like I'm not obsessed with it. Like it's good, but. And anytime I'm watching a subtitled anime, it's definitely like there's another layer of I've got to be wanting to watch, you know, because I have to sit there yeah. and very much so focus on it. Unlike other shows that I could, well, you know, check Discord real quick on my phone or pull out a, you know. And it's uh, it's easy for me to say because like when I started watching it, it was back in like 2017, 
and there was only 800 episodes at the time, and like that was daunting. I was like, oh my god, 800, that's ridiculous. And now it's 1,049 yeah. <laughs> or something, 1,050. And uh, I mean, it, even back then, it took me two and a half years to get caught up. I mean, it's a lot. And there were days where I would watch one or two episodes a day, or I'd watch um, six, you know, because I would like, I didn't do anything with, I didn't like hang out with people or anything really back then. I would just like come home from work and I would watch four or five, six episodes. And uh, I had the time to do it. So, yeah, but it's, it's, I think it's worth it, is the thing. It's, that's what's always so hard about trying to get people into it is like, it's, it's worth it. Because the story that is there is so good, and it's just it's hidden within its length, and that's the downfall of it. But it's worth it. In the long haul. Yeah, I think so. You just have to make it. Yeah. Don't worry. You know, Tom will it. be on episode a thousand in the old folks' home in twenty years. <laughs> it's, well, it's that's it why these ones that are coming bad. out now are like. 12 episodes in the season like you know you can get behind it they've compacted their storytelling to a better yeah. like that's like the problem with trying to watch fucking dragon ball i mean you're gonna watch a fight for fucking eight episodes and it's like good fucking lord and it's shonen like that's what they want to do that's that's how they do it and we're gonna fucking yeah, and make that's how long naruto did the same thing and like shippuden was yeah. like that and shippuden is so fucking long for no yeah. reason the amount yeah. of filler that is in that show is insane. There's like three or four seasons that are literally all filler. Yeah. I, except uh, for like two episodes. That that era of your life where you were doing One Piece, Tyler, I was doing Naruto and Shippuden. And uh, I love the first, I love Naruto, the, those first 250 episodes. They're really tight, fun story. And when he comes back for Shippuden, there's a lot of great stuff. But yeah, definitely watch that show with a guide I, and just yeah, avoid the filler because some of those filler episodes are just so fucking stupid and they contribute zero to to anything and on top of that it does this bullshit thing where it's like hey we're in the middle of some really really good shit we're gonna go back in time when naruto was a kid for no fucking reason You're like yeah. i'm good i don't want to see that yeah he's not a kid anymore i mean he is technically but a lot of back flashes that don't need to happen yeah it's it's not it's a really good show, but yeah, there's a lot of filler you can cut out and have a better experience where, unlike, you know, where I watched every single episode needlessly. <laughs> there is a decent amount of filler in One Piece. See, that's but... the other thing is I looked up a watch list and it literally only has you skipping like three or four episodes here and there, at least for where I'm at. And I'm like, well, what the fuck's the point? I might as well just watch them. Like, yeah, at the point the thing, of you the losing with the One Piece filler. It's, I think it's good. <laughs> like, it's actually like you can't. There are certain things that you can't tell are filler. Like, there is an arc uh, in the beginning of it where they go to this island with this dragon, and like this little girl is involved. It's all filler, but it's super good, and you would never know it. I mean, yeah, I never. I knew did it. not think that was super good. That definitely felt filler to me. Oh, I didn't think very like. Ugh. I didn't think it was uh, filler at all. I just, but I was naive back then. I didn't know. That was like <laughs> when I started getting into like the, these bigger broader animes so i didn't really know that there was filler and shit yeah it definitely told you to skip those and i definitely watched them and i was like yeah i can definitely see why they tell you they, you don't have to watch them yeah. and even the writing wise is like mm, you just you know what it's very much like the game let's go backtrack over here and then over there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true makes sense now all coming together uh, but anyways, that's all the anime I've been watching. I've watched some other shit too. If you want me to talk about that shit, is it a TV series? Yeah, I've watched. I mean, if you uh, want, if you feel you want to talk about it, yeah, man. I've been watching three TV shows. Uh, so I've been I mean, keeping up on that. The Last of Us. Uh, episode three comes out tonight. Really good, really good fucking writing. Really good acting. Pedro Pascal could act his way out of a paper bag, no problem. So good just really really good shit the way that they're able to retell really that story in live action it it, it works I, I thought they'd fuck it up but it works um they've taken a couple liberties here and there with some things and certain scenes but it, overall it's been great that emotional moment from the beginning of the game hits just it's as hard in the show um if not more so i think uh but other than that i've been watching the walking dead Finishing up the final season on that. Uh, I got like 12 episodes 
left uh, season 11. Uh, the final season is incredible. I, I wish I would have watched it when it was coming out, but I was just so over it at the time because I watched so much of it, and it took so long long to finish it that final season because they did like eight episodes they took a break and did eight episodes and they took a break and they did like eight episodes it's like geez just drop all this fucking shit and end it already so i can finish it because as soon as it's over with they drop it on netflix so i was kind of uh i don't know pissed off about that so i was resigned to even watch it but i'm glad well, i did I it's been really gave up on that around whatever season the governor was i was like All right, I'm season over. three yeah. i was like i'm over this i don't really care this much anymore about these characters it was uh i think season five for me the next town they got to after the governor alexandria just, yeah 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 i was like it's just gonna keep doing this they're gonna be in the town for a little while things are gonna go bad and then they gotta go find a new town and then it's like <laughs> not like watching there, family guy in that town Simpsons. forever oh yeah yeah, they're in that town uh, still now. But what has happened is it it has grown where they have set roots in this town, but then they've met other communities, and then they've these communities have banded together, and it's these communities coming together to try to survive this post-apocalyptic world, and then other communities come in and try to fuck that up, and there's wars between them, and then there's this whole other tribe. They're not even a community. It's uh, people who you know wear those zombies faces as masks called the uh fuck i can't remember the name of them the whispers because they walk around with the zombies wearing their faces in and just basically walk in giant herds but they all live together with the zombies it's fucking crazy and there's a big war with them and then you know it's the recovery after the war and then meeting this other community that has fifty thousand people that's where it's at now where this community has basically survived from the beginning of it with everybody still having normal roles, like there's a hospital, there's a government, there's police, there's, you know, shops and schools. And now they're trying to get involved with that and bring the world back to some kind of semblance of what it used to be. And I have a huge... Boner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. For, uh... <laughs> That's it. That's what it is. For anything post-apocalyptic, it's like mm. my favorite genre... It's so fucking weird and interesting to see, like, this just dystopian future of the world, uh, just everything falling apart, and how humanity survives and comes together. I, I love you that know, kind of storytelling. I mean, it's, it's to make tried and true and cliche. called Fallout that you might I played it. Fallout. It's all right. I played three and four. I guess your boner didn't work out for that you one. New Vegas. New Vegas is... Yeah, yeah. It wasn't hard enough at the time, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so Walking Dead's been good. And then I started this other show called The Irregular on Netflix. It's a, um, like, a, I don't know. It's almost like a mystery thriller where these kids are kind of, I don't even know. They're, they're by themselves, but they get the attention of John Watson, you know, Sherlock Holmes's partner. And they have to start investigating all these like paranormal things that start happening around London. And it gets really involved with uh, Sherlock and Watson. And Sherlock is like a drug addict and all this shit because of some shit that has happened with like this paranormal activity and people that it's involved. It's really interesting and unique. I love twists on like tried and true like stories that we know. Like we know. John Watson, we know Sherlock Holmes, but seeing them in a different perspective, I always love that kind of shit. You know, how can we tell these same characters in a different light? And uh, the paranormal stuff is interesting. Um, it's only got eight episodes, and I guess it's not going to be, re- got canceled, so I know it's going to be over with once it's done, but I guess the ending is pretty good as far as, like, leaving it closed but still open, so hopefully it's satisfying when I get to that eighth episode. I'm on episode four, I think. I'm not going to watch it then because you already got me in that one with 1899. I was like, fuck. Dude. Oh, no, you know what? We're not going to make any more of this show. And hey, I, I didn't know. I, didn't, I purposely did not tell Emmy that the entire time we watched it until it got to the end. And then she just looked at me like she wanted to slit my throat. 1899 <laughs> is fucking incredible. That is, it is. It's very, show. very good. And it's very fucking mind fuckery. Yeah. And then they, and they canceled it because Netflix sucks. Yep. But they'll keep fucking Winona Earp going. There, yeah. There's a tried and true story you want to fucking follow with yeah. your little twist. Go watch fucking Winona Earp. No thanks. 
<laughs> Hard pass. Uh, I didn't start it. I just scrolled. Or they just uh, they renewed uh, that new show, The Recruit. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. But they renewed that for season two. What the hell is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My point. Is I'm right. asking you, what is it? <laughs> I, who knows? I don't know. I don't, I don't I've know. Seen, what I've it seen is. it. It's, a, it's an. I've seen it pop up on the new shows. I've never watched it, oh. but it already got confirmed for a season two. So you know, great for eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, that sucks. And it was what, what was great about 1899 is, you know, I started watching it and it was English dubbed. I'm like, man, what the fuck is going on? These people are not speaking English. Yeah, but this it, guy definitely is speaking English because it matches up. So it's crazy. And he's like, well, why would they do that? I'm like, because they're on a boat. Like each other wouldn't like understand yep. what they're saying. So it's really cool if you just watch it and it's regular ones. You got people speaking French. You got people speaking Dutch. Uh, Mandarin. Yeah, yep. you got Dutch. And it's fucking really cool to watch it that way. Yeah. It's uh, watching it and like it's the way it was intended is so good because I you do lose a little bit of that nuance of like the mystery behind it all and the way that they communicate because when they're doing the English dub, their mannerisms and stuff when they're talking to each other, they look fucking weird. And you're like, why are you acting that yeah. way when they're talking mm -hmm. to you? And it's like when you watch it in the original format, it's intended. You're like, oh, yeah, because they have no idea what the other person's fucking saying to them. Right, I was like halfway through the first episode where I changed it to um, I want original audio. Tyler, you muted yourself. <laughs> he was so excited. He's like, you know what? He might have just died. Like, he just Maybe. Yeah, because now his mind. camera's frozen. <laughs> All right. Well, what are you watching then, Hot Shot? Who are you talking to? You. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. Uh, ones that I watched through completely, I started uh, The Witcher Blood Origin. That is very good. Uh, talks about the making of the actual first Witcher. So, um, if you guys watch the show, with Henry not, Cavell, not enough at all. No, no, I haven't seen any of it. Why? Uh, I don't know. Just... Okay. Well, whatever. I'm not, I'm not a huge uh, Witcher guy. So, oh, Yasker, never... the uh, bard. I don't know if you made it to where he is introduced. So, basically... What this is, is it takes place from where the Witcher last season ended, and it's just him in a battlefield, and he gets taken by, like, this elf, and she's like, I'm going to tell you a story that I want you to relate to the people. So then it goes back and then tells. It's it's only, like, four or five episodes uh, origin, but it's pretty good. I enjoyed that. Um, I think Tyler's frozen again. He looks <laughs> it. He really looks it. <laughs> or he is very concentrated on looking at that keyboard. Stop. Wait, wait. See what happens. <clears throat> uh... <laughs> I hear you guys. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's All back. right, he's unfrozen. I have. I... That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. I heard you guys, and then it was just nothing. <laughs> All right. But yes. Anyways, uh, Blood Origin is really good. Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy the Witcher series so far. It's a little like if, starting from the first season. It's it's a little slow going, but I enjoyed it. Um, I'm also watching through Willow right now. I think I'm on episode seven, which is also starts off slow. I'm pretty sure there's ten episodes. And uh, I don't know if you you've probably never seen the original movie because you don't watch movies. I've seen it. The movie or the show? Both. I'm on episode. All the way. Do you watch all of the Willow? Show. Okay. One four of the show. So yeah, the show is really good, especially now that it's it like as where I'm at, it's uh how everything is tying all everybody's like tying back to the movie. It's getting really good and there's some unexpected surprises. What is interesting and weird, but I don't think it's bad, is have you gotten to the end of the episodes where they have a very strange rendition of a rock song? Like it's gotta be three or four or they end it and it's a fucking Enter Sandman starts playing. And it's, but it's obviously it's not Metallica. I think it's the end of three. It might be the end of three or four. And then there's another one that ends and it's Pink Floyd. No, I have not. And it's that a rendition. But they're not bad, like versions. It's not like we're talking, uh, what's the stupid racing game that has the super awful version of Gangster's Paradise? It's not like that. 
Uh, and then there was another one where they're having a party and they were dancing, and it was. Oh, I lied. Uh, I, I haven't finished episode three. Okay, so yeah, I think it's at the end of that one, and they're at a party and they're dancing, and all of a sudden it's uh, Tommy James and the Chandels, um, Crimson and Clover. Oh, but weird. It's not like it's not him. It's like a different version. Yeah, but it's it's cool. I I am enjoying it. Um, the first couple of episodes, like I think one and two, kind of disjointed the way they're trying to like get it going but yes. i think it hits its stride around three or four it starts to get like pull more interest in and like borman is fucking fantastic hands down like best casting choice for that guy that's and, the uh, guy with the battle axe yeah the cleaver yeah yeah the giant cleaver um and uh the girl from falcon winter soldier jade yep. she plays very in this good. she's uh very good in this um yeah it's uh it's it's a good show i enjoy it uh, I've what do you think about watching... Warwick Davis's acting? In? It still seems. Uh, I mean, it's straight Warwick great. Davis. I mean, it seems like everything else that he's ever done. Like, I don't. Uh, I mean, he's getting old. Like, he's probably he's probably struggling a little bit on this. A lot of his like later acting roles haven't been like Willow was his big acting. Yeah, that was his role. first one, I think. Yeah. No. <laughs> Return of the Jedi was his first one when he played Wicked. But yes, that's why he got Willow. But yeah, I mean, his full like straight through movie, I think that's really it. He's only ever been like side actor. Except like, for the Leprechaun you know, movies. The first one. We'll go with the first one. Leprechaun movies are kind of Yeah. Leprechaun in the hood. That's right. Leprechaun in space. Back to the hood. But even those, like he's not in it a lot. Like it's, you know. Yeah. He's it's more of a show him a little bit and I'm sure he's got, you know, there's issues with it. Why he can only do so much, but I don't know. I thought it was okay. Like I didn't mind. It, it seemed very much. He was kind of the character, but he's obviously like hiding something like, Oh yeah. As it's going. Uh, but I mean, acting wise, I think it's I mean, he's pretty much on par with how he acted in Willow. Yeah. Why I didn't think hate... it was great. I didn't think it was great in Willow. I didn't think he was great in that. Well, I mean, I just, just don't like he, him as to, an actor. <laughs> to me, he's the weakest link out of all of them. I think it feels like a really good job. But well, I'm sure, like the way is, it's, uh, it's going forward, I you know it it he may not yeah. be in it if they make more than one season. Yeah, just uh, I don't know something about his delivery. The, the other guy that's with him, that's from the uh, that village, I think does a better job. Um, I can't think of his name. The, I'm just not gonna say anything. Got the beard. Oh, yeah, right. I know. I know. God, well, he's not going to be in it much longer. <laughs> Damn it! <clears throat> not saying anything. Uh, yeah. And then I watched uh, Trigon Stampede. I think the fourth episode. I think is out now. I have to watch that. Otherwise, yep. I was caught up on that. I've been watching Akaduma Drive. I think is what it is. Akudama Drive. It's also on Crunchyroll, right? You watch sure. it. Put it on your list. All right. Um, I will stop yelling at me. <laughs> but uh, oh, I started that '90s show, which is not great. I heard it's not bad though. It's not bad. What? I heard it's not it, bad. It's not bad. It's interesting, but it's kind of like some of the other old like shows that they brought back, where they're like, you know what? We're gonna just sprinkle in people from the past. Yeah. Just to, and it's like that's, is that's that what really the high moment? Yeah, so you get that, and like the kids aren't bad. Like some of them are okay, but it's I don't know how well it works. It's yeah. definitely you can watch it on, and I get chuckles, but usually the chuckles are from Red and Kitty. Is it, is it like a uh, a Fuller House situation? Yeah, very much so. Okay, well I'll probably enjoy it then. If Fuller House was fun. Like yeah, hey, no, it's not bad. It's just, it's not like I mean I was never like oh they need to make the '90s sh like that '90s show. I was never like that. Like it doesn't help that. the first episode, Eric and Donna come back into it, and Foreman is straight Foreman. Like you know, yeah. Topher Grace is just right on par. Like it's straight Foreman, but uh, Donna comes in. It's like not she's not quite the same. Yeah, she's and lost then, that uh that bit to her since she's yeah. did Orange Is the New Black and all that. Yeah. It's just kind of, and she look. She's like uber skinny, like skeleton wise, almost now. It's kind of yeah. Weird. She doesn't look like the same person at all. No, 
but you know, they brought everybody. I mean, obviously, uh, what's his name? Hyde's probably not going to show up because he's no longer allowed to act. That's true. <laughs> well, I think uh, he's like. But Ashton Kutcher shows up. Of a trial. Shows up. Uh, Fez, you know, they're like all the bullies, like pop back in. Tommy Chong's in it. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's it's decent. It's hard to make a sequel to a show too that it's like it's so beloved because that seventy show still holds up already by itself. Yeah. And uh, and it's like legitimately funny. So yeah. it's hard I mean, to never, make I, a sequel I, so far away from it and like still have it tie in and be in another decade and it just you know so i never even finished watching all of it because i stopped once they started to kick like characters started leaving i was like i just, dude, I don't want to watch this anymore like kelso was replaced and foreman left and was like, yeah i'll just stop there which was like yeah i think that was just for like the quick. final season though right like no it was final, prior to that final two seasons or something he went to africa Joined the Peace Corps, became a teacher or some bullshit. Yeah, well, it's not great because he's a professor now that teaches about Star Wars and his daughter's name is Leia. All right, you're not selling me on this show at all. <laughs> I mean, that's the first episode, but I mean, it's very foreman. Like, I mean, it's it's funny. Like, you know, we got Red and Kitty, so it's already going to be like. It's all about them being out of grandparents and context now. And they're just excited that kids are back. And, but no, it was a good show. I think I'm on like episode five or six. I assume there's probably only ten episodes. Ten or twelve would be uh like an hour long, half hour. They're half hour episodes. Oh man, I'll sail through that then. Yeah. Audio tapes, just listen to them. <laughs> Shut up. I need to watch them. <laughs> um, I don't think uh I mean I've been watching other stuff, but nothing like real big. Oh, yeah. Uh, now we're on to miscellaneous. So, what do you got for miscellaneous? Book, book I want to talk about. I got the none of us will read. So one know, book. Ahead. It's all right. I still want to talk about it. Okay, it's called Crescent City: House of Earth and Blood. It's by uh, Sarah J. Moss. Mass. Do they just make rolls in this city? Hello? Is this on? I'm going to let the silence speak for itself on that one. Just... <laughs> All right. We can, put the... laugh... we can put laugh tracks in. This is mostly the... an audio platform, Tyler. I hope you know. <laughs> You're the... No, we need the silence so everybody knows how not good that was. Uh, no, but it's a, it's a really interesting book. Uh, so it's basically about this girl, and she's like, a half fae, half human, and her dad has like really high standing in the city called Crescent City, and it's gets into like a caste system type of deal. It's all about like a caste system and how these people who have power treat the ones below them that don't have power, and how these like it's very much like um, fairy tale kind of characters like angels, demons, uh, werewolves, what have you. They all like live in the city, and they all ha are represented by a certain house. And they all have different affiliations, and it's how all these groups kind of interact and mingle with one another and govern each other inside of this city. And uh, there's a mystery behind it because, like, her best friend within, like, the first one or two chapters is, like, the head of the... She's the next in line to be the prime of the wolves, which is, like, the big leader of the wolves within the city. And she gets murdered, and her entire pack gets murdered, and nobody knows why. And that's what kind of sets off these chain of events that like leads to all kinds of really interesting storylines and like mystery and it's a big like there's a lot of violence but it's like also like, there's like a romance novel as well where uh, she meets this dude who like saves her because there's a lot of demons and shit in it and she gets attacked and it's kind of about her and this angel that she meets and he ends up having to like watch over her because she gets involved in this investigation and uh, just how they interact with each other it's really fucking good it's incredible writing. Really good shit. Like, the last um, couple chapters, I'm like, the last two chapters right now. But like, the last, it's broken up into sections, so you have, or parts, in the last part four of it. It's like, just basically just an all-out war kind of a thing going on within the city. 
and some of the things that have been revealed and the things that take place are just so fucking good. It's uh, I can't say anything else good about it. It's real good, real good shit. Then I'll spoil it for when I read it. Oh, well. <laughs> I just, if anybody listens to this and they read because Tom's being a dick about reading for whatever reason, <laughs> he fucking hates reading. He's just so Nazi about he's reading. Illiterate. He doesn't have time to read. <laughs> he's like, or I just want to listen at work and tune everything up. He just wants to fucking burn all the books. He just wants a good old book burn. <laughs> book burning. But it's good. I recommend people check it out. It's really good. There's a sequel to it. I'm going to get that as soon as I'm done with this one. And uh, start that up. It's like really long too. Like this first book was like twenty eight hours. You know what the um, page equivalent of that is? Not a clue. I could check it up real quick. Seven hundred and fifty. Let's see. Four eighty nine. Seven hundred and fifty. Hold on, look it up. Yeah, the Jeop insert Jeopardy music here. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> and blood. Age count. He's gonna get so the page like and an then freeze. <laughs> it's it's like a... these are free on, or do you buy these? It's uh, eight hundred pages. Oof. All right, you're, ah, closer. you're closer. way closer, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's long yeah, as fuck. So is this is this like an app that you has like free book like Viz like for manga, or is this like you just buy no, these it's... books and hope I that use... you didn't just spend thirty dollars on? No, I use Audible, so I have an Audible subscription. Okay, so I, I pay whatever. It's like fifteen dollars oh. a month, and you get a credit. And you can get any book with that credit, no matter what the price is. And so they let you listen to the books for a certain period of time. Like it does like a demo or a trial sample. That's what it's called. You do like a sample of it so you can listen to it. And if you like what you're hearing, then you can go and buy it. And that's usually oh. what I do. I'll read the descriptions and I'll read the ratings, reviews. And then if I, I just looked it up and uh, there are a good chunk of uh, Shadowrun novels that are on Audible. Yeah, dude, Audible has everything. It's uh I'm just saying I'm time that recommending this for you, sir. Check out shit. Well, I gotta finish this this one I'm on. <laughs> I'm just saying because I've read I've like when you know years ago when I had time to read, I have read through like three or four of the because they're all single hit uh novels. They're not tied together. I mean they're yeah. tied together in the world and whatnot. Um and they're very good. Like they easily could be movies. Like they there's a most of these have they're like movie scripts that the writing is just very very good. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe but I'll get uh, up all and listen to twenty minutes of book and I drive and then. This is uh something that I could see easily becoming like a TV show or something. It's uh the world is interesting enough, the characters are interesting enough, uh the dynamics at play with it in the government and the overarching uh, story. I think that's your next play shadow really and well. bone wheel of time, like basically everything that's been yeah. adapted by any streaming service. What if it's his next much, Chris yeah. Dale? Is, is his next Chris Dale? Well, that, no, you know, no, no. he could be <laughs> fucking you know what sucks about, this about uh, right here. Shadow and Bone, you know, going on a, a random tangent is uh, you can tell books me, are, I didn't those read those books are really it. good, and that show I could not get into at all because the I mean, Shadow you know, and that's Bone typically books, the case with books to movie or show. Yeah, but like they have it set up in a trilogy. So there's like three Shadow and Bone books, and they break it up and they go into another part of the world. And it's called like Six of Crows. And that has like its own trilogy. And then there's another series after that. I can't remember the name of that one, but I've gone through all of them. There's like seven books in total. And I've gone through all of them. And they tie in characters from these different storylines at the very start of Shadow and Bone that you don't even meet until, like, way the fuck later. It's like, it's... And, like, characters meet each other, like, way too soon. It's, it sucks. I hated it. I don't watch that show. Read the books. <laughs> but it's easier to watch the show. Yeah, but it's not as good. In which case, I didn't want to watch that show anyway. Yeah. Real Along Time is like, also not good compared to the Dark books. Materials. And that one is in that books as well from HBO. It is, yeah. I haven't read... Uh... It's like his dark materials, something knife and something else. I can't remember the name of it. There's three of them. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen that show. I guess the show is actually pretty good. It's pretty faithful to the actual book itself. I have the book. I haven't finished it, though. But yeah, check it out if you like reading. And if you're not Tom or Ryan. <laughs> hey, but you say if you like reading, but you're not reading. 
You're listening. What's the difference? What is your it's issue with fucking audio books? It's like you Who can't cares? say it's reading when you're not if reading. If you enjoy like, literature that is being hey, read that's to fine. you. There. Jesus Christ. That makes more sense. <laughs> but if you like reading, it is also in a book form that you can fucking read. What if you can't read? <laughs> then I guess don't fucking bother. How about that? Or get the audiobook so you can listen to it. You know, there's this movie I think you guys should read. <laughs> that doesn't even remotely come close exactly. to the same thing. It's exactly the same. It is nothing like that at all. <laughs> Perfect you are event. a fucking hater of literature. <laughs> God. Uh, That's why you like Destiny 2, because you don't have to read. <laughs> you shoot guns. There's actually a lot of reading in Destiny 2, sir. So, there. Uh, no, well, you don't have time for it, though, so. I don't. I don't have See? time for it. There you go. But, yeah, that's the only other miscellaneous bullshit I got. Uh, I watched uh, the Royal Rumble last night. I haven't yeah, watched like... one of those since the 90s. It was a fun time. Uh, Men's Rumble was up first. Uh, Cody Rhodes was expected to win, and did. He came in 30th uh, and, and won the whole show. It was a, a good Rumble. Uh, the the pitch black match between uh, LA Knight and uh, Bray Wyatt was very cool. It was all under UV light, and they uh, played with that to fun effect. I think it was a very cool aesthetic. I'd like to see that come back. Uh, I saw Logan Paul jump off the ropes and do a clothesline. I hate Logan Paul, <laughs> just like as a person. But yeah, that moment was fantastic when him and uh, I don't even remember who he like. They jumped at each other. They each stood on the top crazy. rope and just jumped at each other chest first. The sound it made was nuts. And they like they clotheslined each other in air yeah. from across the ring. Yes, yeah. it was nuts. It was crazy. Um, women's rumble was very fun. Uh, and I left after that cause it was like 1130 and there was like, now it's time for the Roman reigns versus KO match. The Kevin Owens match and the whole Sammy. That's a fun storyline. I actually got to hit my buddy up, see who won. But, uh, the, the show was a lot of fun, a very good Royal rumble. Um, and I don't typically watch WWE. I'm more of an AEW guy. So, uh, and then the only other thing, which is not, uh, well, it better not be a fucking book. It's not a book, although there are books related. It's uh, this is D and D related. Uh, I don't know how much you guys have been listening to, or this is a little more news related than anything. Uh, heard about the OGL scandal? It's been going on. Not a clue. So the open gaming license was just uh, D and D's way to license, but not actually license their stuff out. It was you know, it was this piece of. Uh, legalese basically saying anyone who makes content is free to do so and use our rule set, ba ba ba. Well, they tried to change it and uh, to monetize it way more strictly, and uh, everyone lost their minds, went completely ape shit for a week before they said anything, and then they went back on it, and it was now they're they're going back. Like they saw that there was money to be gained from it. Yeah, and then they and then like seven hundred thousand people in a week canceled their D and D Beyond subscription. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot it was a lot of people um and so they went back on it because they're like whoa, whoa, whoa we didn't mean to we were just... <laughs> we're just thinking out loud here <laughs> yeah and then they went back on it again and now they're removing any change to the ogl and keeping the 1.0 version in place for who knows how long so uh my trust has been shook in wizards of the coast in D. so anyone listening or who has listened to or watched our, our D D campaign uh, we'll be ending that sometime soon. We're just going to be putting that one to bed. And I'm going to be starting up a Monster Hunter campaign sometime in the somewhat nearish future. It's going to be a little while because I, I still have to read the rule book and then I have to understand the rule book. <laughs> Damn, so you're done with D&D. Uh, I'm not done with tabletops, but I think I am done, at least for now. They need to feel this. Uh, like... They need to understand just how much they fucked up and make sure they don't think about going back on it again Let in the know. future. <laughs> no more no more characters standing on top of turtles pissing into fountains. No, no, That's we'll right. do it. We'll just be rolling yeah. it inside of a different rule set. That's the only <laughs> difference. Um, and even this is D&D related, but it's not directly Wizards of the Coast material. Um, so it's still going to feel familiar, but there's definitely a whole bunch of new rules built in on top of it. I'm excited for it because as a DM, I think it's going to reduce my prep time because we're going to run it more like I'm the Hunter's Guild. I'm just the person at the Hunter's Guild who shows you guys what quests are available. You tell me what you want to hunt, 
and I'll prep that as opposed to the most to... dangerous game. <laughs> Human Tyler. <laughs> Reading a book. Be like that. You should definitely come up with one that's like that. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Um, oh, and... we found out that Chris is actually wanted. <laughs> you can begin running now. <laughs> you get seventy-two hours. Really? Um, but I also think it'll help us catch a wider net of the people who want to play. I know you guys have been wanting to get in on the the, the campaign as well. And with yep. this system, yeah, the few I've listened to, it's just it's it's like I don't know how to jump in as a character. Yeah. At that point, it's yeah, and it can be tough. I get it, and we could have worked something out. Absolutely, we could have figured out how to get you in. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is removing a, a a large chunk of overarching story and just kind of being like, it's just a mission thing. There's there's absolutely going to be character backstory. I want you guys to know who your characters are because you're going to be talking with each other and trying to figure things out. So most of the story is going to be personal relationship more than. Like a I just have amnesia and not have a backstory. I don't remember who <laughs> that, I if am. That, your ba if your backstory is amnesia, <laughs> then yes, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> that's a lazy way out. <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, but I, I think I'd prefer at least a little bit of, you know, the personal chatter. You know, you guys are going to be oh, yeah. a squad, right, working to hunt monsters down. But the the whole idea, too, is, like, if we have eight people who can play, then we can basically play every other week all the time, even if a couple of us aren't here, right? Sure. Because we've got a big enough Yeah, it's group. more of a jump-in, jump-out type deal. Right, yeah. And if someone wants to hunt that monster that they missed, well, we can just hunt it again next session or next time. And they free. can make a new hat. Right, yeah, exactly. Right. So... So look forward to that. I like I said, guys, still got some reading to do, and then I've got to upload the book to you guys, and we got to figure out how we're going to run the characters and everything. But uh, yeah, the the uh, the Cressios campaign is uh, being put to bed for the time being. Unsaid. Didn't even get laid. No, Man. no one got laid in that campaign. <laughs> was there fun to be had? Was yeah, there was. Had, it was think. a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of uh, inter-party drama because we had a paladin and uh, Preston was playing a bit of a con man. So there was this constant like, hey man, uh, don't be fucking around with people. Don't be breaking the law. And he's like, no, no, I'm not doing that while he's fucking around with people at the same time. <laughs> there was a lot of fun. It was a good campaign. Got from level one to level five. Maybe six. I'll say five though. Um, and I'm sad that we kind of left off in the middle of an arc because they're like about to start exploring this literal criminal underground. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I, th I think the Monster Hunter thing is going to work better for the group of people we have playing. Going to work. Sounds better. fun. Yeah, it's going to work better for me certainly because sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes prep can be overwhelming because there's a lot of paths you guys could take, and I'm going to build something, and you guys are going to want to turn around. But if I'm and literally Jeffrey's gonna ruin the whole yeah, thing. Jeffrey's gonna <laughs> cast fart cloud. Um, but but if I'm literally telling you, hey guys, these monsters are available to hunt, and I'm giving you like this one's gonna be a tougher hunt, this one's gonna be an easier hunt, but you tell me which one you want to hunt, then I know sure. exactly what to prep for you guys, and it's gonna make my prep sessions less stressful and easier. So uh, I'm looking forward to that change. Yeah, that seems sure. like a really good idea. Yeah, <laughs> overall. <laughs> Seems like a fun Just time. the whole concept of, oh, hey, you guys want to do a hunt? Yes. Who wants to jump in? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You know. Who are you bringing like with evolve. you? Evolve. <laughs> yeah. Available. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of like, hey, here's this overarching story that takes place at this moment in time that's going to keep going and going and going and going. Yeah, and the nice thing about the hunt is something. it just keeps going, too. It's still your character. You're still moving along. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And like I said, you'll, there will still be story, but it's going to be all the story is going to be stuff you guys are like talking about with each other more so than anything I'm giving to you and you're following along with, you know, sure. It'll be a fun time. But yeah, that's all I've got. I wanted to shit on uh, wizards of the coast for their OGL bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Eat shit. I want to shit on them for canceling that magic game that I was in the alpha test for. That was super fun. <laughs> yeah. They're they canceled fun. like four Bastards. games, didn't they? It was like three or four games that they canceled. I don't know. I just remember that one specifically because I was in the alpha and like everything was already like voice acted and stuff. Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, whatever we... happened to that game? Oh, they canceled it. <sighs> okay. What are we going to do with them? I don't know. Boycott them, right. apparently. Yeah. Just shit on them. That's right. Uh, anybody else? Anything? Nope. All right. That'll do it for this fantastic week of 
learned things. Reading. <laughs> Next week. Maybe I'll read a book Play with my book. ears. Listen to a book. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how much time I have. Um, otherwise, we will talk to you again next week. You can stare at Tyler in frozen space if you watch the YouTube version. That was weird. <laughs> it was very weird. Um, otherwise, have a good week. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. to go in fucking the uh, adult shop, Heron Inn head shop nearby has, you can buy gummy dicks. And I'm going to buy each of you a bag of dicks that you can fucking eat. <laughs> right, bring them on the plane. Yeah, bring, we'll bring them on the plane. Just open up a How bag else of am dicks? I supposed to get them there? Just eat them? I'm just eating a bag <laughs> of dicks on the plane. What are you doing? I'm eating a bag of dicks. Leave me alone. I wish Tom should just keep one of those on his person so whenever someone tells him to eat a bag of dicks, he can pull pull it out and just... Well, don't mind if I do. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, I was a little hungry right now. <laughs>